welcome to the triumphant show. Um, it is going to be an awesome show tonight. I am your host, Sharita Lovelace, and I'm just so excited to be with you um, again on a Monday night. I love Mondays because it's the start of our week. It's the start of a chance for us to um, go ahead and just allow everything that we have gained from church service yesterday um, to fuel us into the next five to six days to allow us to get through obstacles, hurdles, and just be able to know that God is a triumphant God as always. Again, if you have not um, shared the broadcast, go ahead and like and share the broadcast because there's always a word or something that the Lord releases on this show. And we want to, uh, we don't want to be stingy with God's word. We want them to be able to receive it and to be able to be blessed by it and have their lives changed. And so I want to first give a couple of announcements. First, a quick shout out to um, some of the stations that support um, this show, The Triumphant Show with Charita Lovelace. I want to thank Vision TV um, and their global broadcast. I want to thank um, the UK, Nigeria, The Triumphant Radio Show in the UK and Nigeria, and all of the global media partners um, that are coming aboard to allow the gospel of Jesus and just allow triumphant stories to reach um, other parts of the world so that people are blessed and so that they can also hear the good news, the good news that um, victory is still theirs no matter what they've gone through. And of course, our favorite scripture, 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. I tell you every every week that this is the place where victory repeats itself. It doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter your experience. God just gives goodness, grace, and mercy over and over again. And that's why I love him so much. So praise be to God. So listen, tonight I'm really excited about the show. Um, and I just want to just, there's so many nuggets that I want to get to. So I'm going to try to just kind of calm myself down a little bit. Um, I have so many questions and we may not get to everything, but I've already, I've already uh, mentioned sideways kind of slightly to my guest that I see the Lord bringing him back on the show again because of um, the, the anointing that God has on his life. And so I'm excited about that. But let's just get right to it tonight. I'm excited to bring Apostle Dr. Terry Cummings to the show. Let me tell you briefly about my wonderful guest. And listen, there is more to this show that, that meets the eye. So I want you to receive whatever impartation and revelation that the Lord has for you, because it's not just about um, a life we live. It's about what God is doing and has done in people's lives and how we can be able to share the triumphant and the goodness of God and how he moves us forward and what he does. I believe God just sets us up. We think we do things for a reason, but God just sets us up every time. You know, we think we're in, in a, a particular area of life when we're at one period of our life and God has it all as a setup and a design for the next period of our life. That's how much I love the Lord. But listen to this two time NBA all star 1983 rookie of the year has been in the NBA for um, 18 plus years. I like to put the plus in because the preparation process means something. Um, this awesome man of God uh, has not only played with and against, but people that we know and we hear of all the time, such as Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Dr. J, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Charles Barkley, Julius Irving, um, and so many more. And so what is so awesome about the, this is that there's more to the story, again, that meets the eye, and it's just a setup, and I'm just excited to have um, Dr. Terry Cummings on the show just to share and inspire and to be able to bless someone about his journey as he shares about his journey and his life and the things um, that God has graced him with. I mean, we're talking about rookie of the year. Um, you know, I, I read an article about him making 16,000 shots in his career. There's so much more. You all know Triumphant Family. I do my research and I love it. And I just sit in front of the YouTube and I'm like, wow, amazing how God can do that. And then you can still bless people, not only on the court, but in the King's court. So everybody that is watching and listening, I want to welcome, have you welcome with me, Dr. Terry Cummings. Welcome to the show, Dr. Cummings. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you, woman of God. Thanks for having me. 
Absolutely. Listen, I, I want to ask so many questions about your life and, and then just how you move in the anointing with the Lord. But I want to go back to the beginning before um, you even got to basketball. Share with the viewers and listeners tonight, first of all, um, a little bit about your background. I understand you grew up in the north side of Chicago. Tell us about that experience, your family, a little bit you know, about the making of who um, Dr. Cummings is. Well, I'm, I'm uh, actually one of uh, 13 children. There's seven boys counting me and six girls. And uh, we grew up down the street from Cabrini Green, which at the time was uh, one of the roughest and toughest uh, housing projects in the country. And also, you know, the site of a Cooley High movie and all of that stuff. Mm. So, um, But it was really a rough upbringing. But, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing about how when you grow accustomed to live it a certain way, you don't know it's bad. You know, I mean, I didn't know how bad it really was until, to be honest with you, I was probably about 27, 28 years old, sitting now talking to uh, one of the coaches who was coaching at, uh, coaching for the Milwaukee Bucks at the time. And he was a Southern gentleman type guy. Mm. Uh, so he didn't really understand how we could uh, live the way we live and, and still thrive. And so he was sitting down and they had written a big article in the Milwaukee Journal. And he came to me and he said, TC, he said, I've read this stuff. He said, is all of this stuff true about you? And I said, yeah, I said, that's how I grew up. You know, I grew up finding dead bodies. You know, I was drinking and smoking by the time I was eight or nine years old. And, you know, by the time before I got saved at 16, I mean, I was already carrying a gun in one pocket and then a knife in the other. And it wasn't okay. so much to scare anybody or it wasn't even about gangbanging. It was to protect myself. I mean, right. that was how dangerous the streets of Chicago have always been. Right. Uh, for me, uh, I got, I became born again at 16. Wow. Uh, my mother had sent me away to Hammond, Indiana, and it's real rural compared to Chicago. And uh, my grandparents lived there and um, pretty much the rest was history. I uh, wound up one night falling asleep. The room was pitch black. I woke up thinking I was in hell, had had a dream, saw Jesus coming on a white horse and white apparel, crown, scepter, mm. and millions upon millions of people following. And I didn't know much about God, but I knew growing up in the old Congregational Church of God in Christ that I was going to hell. <laughs> for oh God, right, right. <laughs> you know, so I woke up that morning and it was dark in the room and I sweated all night and I thought literally I was in hell. I mean, it was really real for me. And I happened to see some light over in the corner. I ran toward the light and come to find out it was coming from one of the curtains or the windows. And I ripped it back and just began to just repent. And, and mm. from there, you know, the Lord saved me. And it took some while uh, uh, to get to the point where I could literally I uh, know what it was because I remember from 16 to about uh, 19 or or so, you know, being in college and fasting and praying Wow! Uh, in, in that uh, my freshman, sophomore year and saying to God, I, I, I know you called me uh, to to do something, but I don't know what it is. And so this fast for three months uh, on and off, you know, uh, no food, some food, one meal, uh, fruits and vegetables, you know, on and off for about mm -hmm. three months. And finally, I had an experience and, and it has been a part of the, the whole thing of my life. God has always met me in supernatural ways. And mm -hmm. this one, I went to lie down. And as soon as my head hit the pillow, my spirit left my body. And I went straight up through about five or six floors of the dormitory, straight up passed uh into the heavens and and looked up and could hear i could see this figment coming down in pure white and i heard the audible voice of god call my name and speak to me and i was so scared that i went I, my spirit went right back down to my body hit it and i felt the jolting of it and then i looked up and that that figment was hovering over my bed and um the holy spirit uh, spoke to me and he said to me, you can't, he said, Terry, you can't do anything until the Holy Ghost shows up. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning to me of the ministry, you know, because I think that for all of us who think that our ministry starts when someone recognizes what ministry is in us, or if we go to seminary or cemetery, right. <laughs> seminary yeah. and yeah. then get educated, yeah. you know, uh, we think that it starts to know it starts when the author and the finisher of it mm. shows up and appoints you and tells you, I've called you and chosen you out of many to do.
to do something specific and special uh, on behalf of God and his kingdom. And for me, it started at 16. And by the time I was a, a freshman, sophomore in college, I had a path to follow. And I knew that right. even to this day, some 30 years plus later, I will not start a service until I know the presence of God is in the service. Mm, mm, mm. You know, and it doesn't matter how much singing and worshiping and things have gone on. I need God in there on the level of the word he has given me uh, mm. to, to minister to the people. That mantle matters. You have to be mm. prepared with the mantle at all times. Right. I mm. love it. Woo. Okay, you're already blowing me away. And I, I feel like doing a quick <laughs> praise dance and coming mm. back to the mic. And the reason why is because I get excited when I hear people have the experience of the power of God because so many people don't still believe how God moves and brings people into the fold of who he is. And Amen. so when you hear an, uh, an actual testimony, when you hear an actual event that took place, you begin to then become um, evidence of the power of Jesus Christ and how he moves and how he can still sustain you even when you still don't know everything, even Amen. when you're still learning and, and trying to understand, but God just does something. And that's the power of God. And, and something that came to my spirit while you were talking was we hear the word or the phrase product of our environment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we look at that, that phrase negatively. Oh, that's a product of their environment. But I'm going to tell those of you that are watching and listening tonight, the product of your environment can still be a healthy place because if God shows up and gives you an experience and sets you somewhere so you can keep going through that dark path, you are that Holy Spirit example product from your environment. And so sometimes we can't always belittle um, where we've come from. That's right. Or, or, or what, what happened around us because God still moves in that place. And so I thank God for just that beginning of your testimony of sharing that. So those of you that are listening and watching, no matter where you're at, does not mean that God can't move on your life and allow great things to come. He just is looking for a willing vessel. And That's even right. when you don't know everything, God will still uh, deposit what you need. Amen. If you're just tuning into the show tonight, we are talking to Apostle Dr. Terry Cummings, who is right here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. We're going to share his church information later on in the broadcast. And we're just listening a little bit about his story um, before he even got to the NBA. Now, Apostle, I wanted to ask you, were there any other family members that were connected in sports and ministry at that age bracket in your life at the time? No, actually, my my uh, brother that was a year older than me, uh, Lee, uh, started in ministry before I did. But then he oh, went wow. back out. He went back out, and he was really young too, because he was only a year younger than I was at the time. Wow. But the the overall influence, uh, as far as the a youthful presence, uh, was right. my was my uncle Bishop John White, uh, who was also just a couple years uh, older than myself. But wow. when I got saved at sixteen. Uh, it was because of him that I maintained that that salvation uh, insight and walk. Uh, he would set, he would do outdoor revivals as an evangelist, and I would be one of the young cats that was uh, out there setting up chairs for the meetings. And then, but wow. it was also in in those meetings I saw the spirit of the Lord moving, and I realized that um, this was not church as usual. Even though back then in in the seventies, uh, when those things were taking place. We were used to going to church and seeing God, you know, if somebody wheeled in, they walked right. out. You know, we were used right. to seeing them if they came in on crutches, they ran right. out. And uh, we uh, and I know this is not the testimony of, of an athlete or, or a ball player. Mm. This is a testimony of a bystander that stood there and watched until it got on him and right. made, made it uh, an efficient process by the Holy Spirit to just do the same. Because my, my ministry has been filled with the the miraculous of, of seeing people with cancer healed, uh, people with um, um, crooked legs healed, straightened out, deaf ears, blinded eyes, you know, all kind of things, you know, that have taken place and not because of anything I have done, but because I stood on the word of God and God is honored to follow and keep his word. He can't deny himself. So that if we say what he says about it, and I believe the Greek word for it is homologio, Homologio means that we say what God says about us. And when we when we speak to our own environment, 
and we can command our own environment based on what God has said about it and make it fall in line with the will of God. And where most of us don't see God move anymore is because we don't put him on, on the spot to the point Ooh. where where we would allow him to prove himself bigger than the last experience and circumstance. And most times we just get caught up, you know, mama say he don't do it no more. So we don't, we don't try. Look at that. I, I didn't grow up with a mother or a grandmother like that. These, these people were praying and fasting people right. these were folk who did not care about the status quo. Right. It like it doesn't matter what the, what the doctor done said, what the devil done said, what your body has said, God right. said with his stripes, ye were healed. You are yeah. healed. And if it shows up again, you'll be healed again. Right. Same yesterday, today, and forever. That that God. That's right. You know, That's that right. God. And and it's almost like sometimes we we have become so impatient with God showing up. So we talk about we need this healing and this deliverance of the church, but we have people that only give a slot of time, if any, to allow just what you said, the Holy Spirit to come and do his work. But I, I, I understand exactly what you're speaking about, because I think that when we say, God, we're, we're just here on your time, however long it takes. We just welcome you into this place and we mm -hmm. go into that place of worship and we Stay there. I think we would see more, but we have these microwavable services. We have these yeah. microwavable um, sessions of praise and worship. We have these things that give us accolades and that allow man to be glorified more than we allow God to be glorified in our service. And so, unfortunately, people that have been in church for thirty and forty years have never truly experienced the power of God because they've only seen just a church in motion. Amen. They haven't seen church really being experienced and, and, and the Holy Spirit really ex bringing forth an experience in the services. And so um, I, I know God is real. I know there's still power yeah. in what he does. And my prayer is that more and more people that get that platform to show uh, their members the power of that, that they will begin to get to if, a level where if, they, they won't. If I may. Yeah. The, the 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 thing is, is is to move beyond the religious mindset and to find yourself in a relational place relational. with God. Because if you it. don't if you don't move into relationship with God, God won't reveal the mm. hidden things. Uh, Deuteronomy twenty nine and twenty nine says that the hidden things or the secret things belong to God, but the right. things that are revealed belong to the children of men, so that they will be mindful to keep the commandment of God. And it tells you that. You know, even in First uh, Samuel, I believe the third chapter where the scripture says that Samuel did not yet know the Lord for the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. And the reason for it was not because Samuel was not doing work or laboring. It, the reason was that Samuel, even as a child, had not had relationship. He had not built a relationship with God. But he was still working in the church. He was still working under Eli, but had not formed his own relationship with God until he heard the voice of God calling him in the night. And amen. And, and, and why some of us read that stuff and think it's just a story. It's not just a story. The scripture says, if you draw nigh to God, God will draw nigh mm. to you. Religion is the form. The scripture says they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. The power is the relationship. You cannot attach yourself to the relation to the to the power keg and not be in relationship. I found this to be very true about God. God will not reveal himself to someone he's not in relationship with. Woo! That's good right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining the Trump and show. We are done. <laughs> that is, that, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that is almost that is right there. The, the crust of this pie we're making, you know, that when you're not in relationship, mm -hmm. how can you understand the DNA of Christ? That's right. How can you understand how the attributes operate when you're not in relationship? Then you just begin to talk about God. But again, that experience with him is not there. Oh, that was powerful, Apostle. Mm -hmm. That was powerful. Mm -hmm. and, and so with that, th this this wealth of, of knowledge that God um, favored you with at such an early age, you were a teenager, um, called into the ministry, <clears throat> um, you went through school and college. How was that transition into the NBA? Um, fortunately for me, I had, a, you know, just the, the little bit of testimony that I've shared, you know, I had so many things that took place in my life that was supernatural that I was truly unable to position myself with other of my peers because I would never be able to deny God is real because I've seen him. You know, I mean, literally I have seen Christ. 
and I have had visions and dreams. I've walked and talked with him. Uh, and because of that, once I, by the time I got to the NBA, I had in place some dis, certain disciplines and uh, focus points, you know, my prayer life, my time of study, uh, instead of watching TV and going to clubs and hanging out, when we would be, be on the road. I would stay in my room. I'd be given, not trying to be or position myself to be super deep. And I'm not talking about that. I was working on my relationship before I knew that that was what I was doing. But I knew that that was the requirement for God to use me. And one of the things that uh, always separated me is I always wanted to bring pleasure to God. And in I even reached a point and I'm very transparent. I believe that the more transparent we are, the less we have to lie about. That's you know, it. and so part of my transparency is, is there was a time in my life in my uh, late 20s, early 30s, where I grew very uh, unfond of being that guy that everybody would go to. You know, I didn't want to be him. I wanted to, to get out and I wanted to have fun and I wanted to make mistakes. And, you know, I wanted to right. know what it was like to have a glass of wine and party and do all that stuff because I'd never done it. And uh, and God's grace is is uh, is amazing because yeah. you there are things that you just need to go through in your life. And I'm not just talking about having a glass of wine and party. I'm talking sure. about life in general. in general, things that you have to go through in your youth so that you won't go through them in your maturation. When, mm. you, when you have matured and come of age and, oh, that's good. and you now have set your sights on what the real goal is, the goal right. ain't building up millions of dollars and having all the homes and the cars and the houses right. and all of that stuff. No, it's finding out what, what you were positioned in this world to do. I mean, what right. is the original intent of God for your life? It cannot be to be married and to have kids and it cannot be to build up bulk of riches because you can't take none of it with you. Right. So the, the important thing for me was to find out what it is, what it was that God wanted from me at a young age. And even when going through this point of distraction where I just got confused and wanted to do what I wanted to do, uh, God used that opportunity to show me that you're nothing more than flesh and blood. Your mortality mm. is going to show up at some point. You know, right. uh, I didn't share this piece, but, yeah. you know, I collapsed uh, in, in my rookie year in the league playing in Utah. We were playing, I was playing for the Clippers and um, they said, you know, they thought it was an iron deficiency. So they took me out for a few games and gave me a bunch of iron and, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, came back and and it, it kept reoccurring. And finally, um, I wound up missing the last seven or eight games of the season, uh, wow. going to Northwestern Hospital in Chicago and was diagnosed with arrhythmia and uh, told that I should never play again. And that if I do, uh, I would probably drop dead and die. And I tried it for about three months. And I um, I um, I remember renting a place on the on the far north side of Chicago and being mad at God because I thought that I'd done everything you asked me to do. I'd right. done, I, I, yeah. Everybody you told me to speak to, I did whatever you told me to do. I went out and did it. And here I am sitting here and everything that I thought I wanted to do in my lifetime is wrapped up in this yeah. decision by these doctors to tell me that you'll no longer ever play basketball again. Mm. And three months into it, you know, I was uh, sitting there moping around and went and laid down on the bed. And I saw these uh, three little figments run across the floor and knew what it was, because if you've been in holiness, Pentecostal uh, churches, if you've been around the anointing and the mantle, if you've heard right. the voice of God, you know that those those were demons running demons. around in the place. And so I knew what I was supposed to do, but I was so bogged down with my feelings of anger toward God that I just sat there and, and didn't do anything. And they came in that room mm. and, and held down my legs, my chest, my stomach, and were choking me. And I was literally, you know, sitting there, it was, they were trying to kill me. And right. I know that this, for some people, may sound crazy, but for most of us who've had these experiences, we'll understand, ain't right? Crazy. Yeah, ain't nothing crazy about it. It's not crazy. <laughs> no, but that moment uh, was the moment I started to understand that there are some things you just don't understand that God allows in your life that you That's cannot right. blame Him for them. You have to be mature enough to accept the fact that He knows what's best for you. And so, while they were choking me, I finally got the name Jesus out and it lifted yeah. and the power of God flowed through the room. And I got up and did something that changed my whole life. I got up. I went the next day, put on my warm up and I started walking toward the park to go and run. And because uh, they told me if I exert myself at all, I probably would have an arrhythmia and die. 
Mm-hmm. And um, so I went out there and the devil talked to me the whole way. He said, if you go out there, you're going to die because I wouldn't let the mother-in-law go. I wouldn't let the wife at the time go. They were all talking about, you shouldn't go by yourself. I said, I don't need none of y'all because this, this y'all already telling me not to do it. But the, the, the God in me is telling me you right. have to do Come it. On. You know, you have to do it. So went out and the devil was talking, you're going to die out here. Nobody's going to find you. I ran the first day about a quarter mile. He talked the whole way, the next day a quarter mile, the next day a quarter mile. Before the week was out, I was doing a half mile and a mile. Wow. And the longer I ran, the the least, the less and less of his voice I heard. But these were the, the shock tremors that go through the kingdom of darkness when we who are supposed to fail don't fail. You know, I'm not talking about we don't fall. Mm. I'm not talking about we don't make mistakes. I'm saying we right. don't fail. We don't fail and that we don't give up. And, you know, I keep moving and running. And but it has been that has been an igniter of the fire of God in my life because I could have easily given up. But the the real testimony is, is when I came back the second year and got a doctor to say that I I could play, I wound up playing for 17 more years in a a league at the (laughs) highest level where they would they told me I would never play again and that if I did, I could and would die. But God said, no, you're going to live. It's going to be a testimony. Yeah. You know? My God. My God. And I just keep hearing, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. They shall not. And here you are, the walking miracle testimony. God allowed you to go through it so that other people will be able to understand they can make it through too. Amen. You know, when that darkness begins to come upon them. Um, if you are just tuning into the show tonight, family and friends, we are talking to Apostle Dr. Terry Cummings, two time NBA All Star, 1983 Working of the Year, 18 years in the NBA, uh, but also sold out for Christ as a church here in Stone Mount. We're going to get to that shortly. And we are just hearing the powerful testimony of his life. Um, really even before the fullness of his NBA career. It sounds like God has just done so much in him and it's called into ministry. And so it's just exciting to hear. And those of you that are watching and listening tonight, if you have teenagers, young people that need to hear this story to also understand the importance of foundation, mm, foundation of Jesus Christ, make sure that they tune in and listen to this show and or listen to the replay uh, because God just makes no mistakes. And I do believe that he puts us in places to set us up for great things to come. Uh, So apostle, one of my questions for you is when you did eventually get into the NBA, I understand you've also played with the Milwaukee Bucks, the San Antonio Spurs um, and some other teams, but were you, um, was it expected that you were always, as you kind of said, the, the person to go through? Were you always the one praying over the team and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, giving word? And, and, and again, I know from what you shared previously in terms of your concern, in terms of stopping things for a minute and everything you went through. But how was that and how were you able to still sustain your walk with the Lord throughout that 18 year journey? Aside from the temptations, what what else sustained you? What what could you say? You traveled a lot. You you know you were in the public eye. You know? Well, the the thing is, is I I don't preface ministry before the relationship with God, and I and I Excellent. learned this the hard way because um, the reason most pastors and leaders, spiritual leaders, get in trouble is they think that what they're called to do is more important than the relationship mm-hmm. to the person or to the God that called them to it. And, and what I find with a lot of my friends is they spend more time working in their church than they do spending time with God. And yeah. it reflects, you know, because when they get in trouble, they try to find solutions that are more man-made solutions than they are God-inspired solutions. But right. what, what I, I worked on at an right. early age was uh, my decisions were made before my choices were, or my choices were made before I decided what I would do. And what I mean by that is, is I didn't wait for something to come up. I already made the adjustment in my mind and in my heart that if it came up, this is how I would handle it. Handle it. You know, how you have to think ahead of times. I think they call it in so- sociology, uh, uh, visualism to be able to see something before you actually do it. 
you know, to see it in your mind. You know, we do it anyway. We don't know the concept of what it's called, but it's called visualization. You, where you literally, you see it in your head, in your mind, you think about it, you think about how you would do it. But for me, I learned early, choose uh, to, to do something a certain way. If you're gonna have integrity, integrity does not denote that you're perfect. It merely means right. that you carry out things exactly the same way after you've done something wrong. Oh. Uh, as you would if you had not done it at all. You, you right. still walk in character, you still walk in integrity, and you still treat people with the love of God. And, and the thing is, the only way you can really do that is you have to be selfless. You have to get to the point where yeah. it's, it's far less about you and it's all about what God has taught you to do. And again, this is not to be super spiritual. This is the word of God. He teaches God. us to, to, to be his ambassadors, to right. walk in the image of Christ, you know, right. you know, to, to be strong in the Lord and in right. the power of his might, not in the political scene, not a, a Republican or Democrat, Come you know, on. not Pentecostal or Presbyterian, because none Come of on. these things existed when the New Testament church was formed. These are all man-made things. That's right. You know. That's right. That's powerful. It, it reminds me of there's a quote that that I pulled um, from an interview that you've had years ago. And it, it the quote was something to the fact of and I think I wrote all of it down. Correct. I did not come to the NBA to play or to be a loser. And I'm going to stop right there. And the reason why that hit me so hard, because at the end of what you said, you said, so because I didn't come to be a loser, why not just win? Mm -hmm. Now, when we think about that in terms of our walk with the Lord, why not just win? That's right. Why not win over adversity? Mm -hmm. Why not just win over our circumstances? It was just so profound to me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we forget to, we, but you, 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 you're you walking in this example and you're, you're continuing to shine light, uh, light on us tonight. But we have to remember when we, when we decide to be that ambassador for the kingdom of God, that there is no losing mentality. No. If, you, if once you get in there, you've got to win at everything. Have that mentality. We are going to win. Mm -hmm. God gets the victory all the time. Everything that He wrote in, in that book for us, that instruction, that that love story, the Holy Bible for us, gave us direction, focus, strategy, and even revelation in mm -hmm. between the lines for us to get through whatever our circumstance is. And so, when we think about what even what you said, how you know. It's all a part of ministry is who we are. It truly is supposed to be who we are. So mm -hmm. whether the Lord takes us to the NBA or takes us to the pulpit or takes me to, to dance class or whatever it is, if this is who I am, I'm going to do it the best of my ability. That's right. I'm not going to do it just to play around with it. And so when I heard that and when I think about people that accept their call, the, the, the mindset has to be I cannot lose against the enemy, to the enemy. You yeah. know, I can't just think that it's okay to just have a reckless life and, and be defeated by the schemes of the devil. I came to win. You know, mm -hmm. I, I come to win. I, I come to, to speak and declare the blood over my life, over my circumstances. And so I'm listening to you talk and, and it is blessing me. And, and I know all of you that are watching and listening tonight, it's blessing you as well. Um, but that strength uh, that you have, that some people don't have, do you think that's because growing up, in Chicago and the things that you had to endure just kept you in that strong mindset as well. So when the time came for you to even go forward in the destiny that God called you to, you still carried that strength in, in, in everything, but starting from having to be strong when you grew up? Yeah, no, I, I, I do think that it was really in, indicative of the journey. Uh, I think that had it not been for the way I was raised in uh, around a, a group of praying and fasting people mm -hmm. in the midst of growing up in the inner city, uh, if I had not latched on to God when he latched on to me, I think it would have been a different, you know, a different story. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I literally think there's, there's a, a scripture that's really kind of descriptive of this. It's a, uh, in uh, Ecclesiastes, it says that the, the race is not given to the swift, neither to the strong, but to the one yeah. that endure to the end. the end. You know, and the and and uh, the thing about I believe this is Ecclesiastics, um, but it's also a reference to it in the New Testament. And it um, what it did for me is 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 I had uh, come up, and I think this will really touch uh, some people's hearts. Uh, I was raised around people who told me I would never be anything. 
you know, that um, I would be a failure, that I would be, as my father was an alcoholic most of my early teenage years up to the time I was 16, that I was going to be like him. And then I had my first child when I was 17 and I was told that's all you're going to do is make babies. You ain't going to, you ain't going to accomplish nothing. And then, um, it dawned on me one day that God, uh, knew all of this stuff about me and, and he still called me and he still mm. chose me. And, yes. and, and, and so it, it, it behooved me at some point, even as a young man, when I wasn't being taught by older men or older older women, aside from just the basics of how to pray and how to fast and to get to God. And when I got to God, I found out God was not as judgmental as people. Yeah. He, he was not ignorant to who I was. He knew who I was. I could set up and lie to him and say I didn't do it, you know, or that that was not me. But when he called on me and asked me, you know, who I was and what my what my name was. I told him who I was. I didn't hold that back. And I think if there's one thing that has been a blessing to to this walk in my life, it has been the transparency between me and God, because mm -hmm. I had to learn at a very early age. I could not trust other people with my relationship because they they were too damning and they were too negative, And most didn't even have the faith to believe the way I did as a teenager, as a 20 year old, as a 30 year old. And even now I have to be real guarded about the things that God shares with me that right. I in, in depth think because they're not for everyone. You That's know, right. but it's the transparency between the individual and their God, our God, Je our God, Jehovah, Yahweh, right. the great I am. That transparency, you would think, well, I have to be transparent. No, you don't. You can choose to lie. You can choose right. not to tell the truth. But the transparency breeds faithfulness and God rewards faithfulness. And that and that has been the key to my life. It's the relationship I've had with him. I've kept with him even when I was at my worst, even when I was at my best, even when I was in between. I did not relinquish my relationship with Christ, even when people that I loved and I cared for ridiculed yes. me and talked about yes. me and persecuted me and, and didn't, and, and, and the holier than thou crew came in and Come on. You, know, you, you can't be a godly man doing this and doing that. No. And, 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 and I would agree with them, but I said, but this is not who I will be. This is who I am right. now. I'm in the midst That's of right. my struggle right now. You know, right. in the midst mm. of my struggle, I look real marred like the clay uh, on the potter's wheel. But if Ooh. you're going to just judge me by the process, you're going to miss me in the end because the Ooh. end is the outcome that I'm looking for and I'm pressing for it. I mean, not just preaching it, but this is the life I live. I'm looking for the outcome, right. you know, the end result of all of this mess. That's right. You know? I mean, you are blessing me over and over again. That is why the slogan for this show is that victory repeats itself over and over again. And those of you that are watching and listening to the Triumphant Show tonight, as we are speaking with Dr. Apostle Terry Cummings, uh, we are hearing a phenomenal testimony um, about his walk with the Lord and just his life, um, even through his career um, on the courts. And, and I'm just so blessed by this. And just something you said, it's, it's almost as if, and those of you that are watching and listening, it's so key to remember and think about and maybe reflect how God equips us for the journey. Mm -hmm. Even when we're not sure how things are gonna go, if you pay attention, God is slowly equipping us for the journey, you know, it's like yeah, you have your, your belt on and God is equipping you and giving us the things that we need for the journey ahead and for the things to come. And when I listen to Apostle Cummings' story, it, it just, I keep seeing these different things and uh, weapons um, in the spirit that the mm -hmm. Lord has given him to be able to walk um, in this journey and sustain himself as he's as he was in the public eye. And so for those of you that are listening and watching, um, even if you feel like you know someone or you yourself are going through something at this point, um, also grab the nugget as he talked about being processed and being in the midst of struggle and, and, and be assured that God will finish what he started. Amen. You know, he, he begins a good work, but he finishes a good work as well. Amen. And so our goal is to, to not be that judgmental, not be in that position where, um, you know, we think that we have to go with what man says. Yes, sometimes you got to step back, isolate yourself so God can complete the process or so that you don't get off course by the words and the talk of people and, and man and so forth. And so I'm really blessed by that. And just having the power of the Holy Spirit to rest, rule and abide 
in the journey makes all the difference. Um, so I, I wanna, I want the people to to know and hear how did the church start? When when at the point that you were playing for the NBA, what transitioned you into starting the church? No, I had actually retired in two thousand. By that time, I had played okay. eighteen years, and so right. I had moved from. Uh, San Francisco back to um, I'd always kept a home in San Antonio and then uh, the Lord I was sitting in the church that I had been fellowshipping with uh, Bishop David and uh, Claudette Copeland in San Antonio ah. and um, was sitting in Bible study one day and the Lord spoke to me said I want you to get up and leave this cave and I want you to go do what I told you to do and be who I told you to be and that was in 03 uh, and then I was still traveling around the world because I do music. So I was doing shows. I was opening up for Frankie Beverly and Mays. I was doing right. shows with Kim and, you know, singing, playing on stage, doing a lot of different things. But this was what he gave me to do. You know, he told me, uh, I thought, you know, obviously doing praise and worship aligned itself with the ministry more than singing R&B or love songs. But the Lord told me, I want you to sing. I want you to write songs with love in them because then they can't forget me. He said, I come into, to the foreplay. Mm. And so I started writing and doing all that stuff. And in, a, in 05, I was in Jacksonville at, at a show and I was in my room in the hotel and the Holy Spirit came in the room and he called my name and he told me, he said, Terry, I have need of you. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to go and gather my people together and get them to trust in me again. And so I went and started a ministry in Stone Mountain, Georgia, uh, that was uh, a whole bunch of small ministries and they were called the gatherings. And we got together, we would have services and the spirit of the Lord would move all type of deliverance, people getting saved and, and all of that. And then I was uh, asleep one day and, and the Lord took me to a place I've been driving past for about three years. And he said, I want you to go in there. He said, but I don't want you to start a church. And in fact, when I stood in the doorway, there was a man who was an angel. He was standing in the door with me. He told me, don't start a church. He said, just do the work and it will become what it's supposed to be. And so uh, that is how that ministry started because I was fighting him tooth and nails. I did not want a pastor, wow. you know, and um, and not because I want to be disobedient. I just know that that is one of those things that is an honor when God okay. calls you to it. And if you're not clear that he's called you to it, don't do it till you are, wow. you know, because once you're in it, you're in it, you know, yeah. and you want to do right by God, not by yourself. You want to do right by God. So here we are 12 years later, my testimony to anyone out there that God is called to do anything in the kingdom of God is do it the sooner, the better, because what pastoring has done for me is made me a better man of God and a better man. It has smoothed out my rough edges. It has made me mature in the areas where I was having issues, not only in my mind, but with my flesh in general. And again, as as being a transparent person, I'm not going to sell Jesus to people on a whole scale level of falsities. The truth of the matter is there's nothing easy about doing this the God way, you know, <laughs> but it's still it's still easier than it, you doing it your way. Because if we do it our way, we're going to die of heart attacks because you, you're going to get your heart involved where your heart shouldn't be. This is God's work. It's up to him to do it. I mean, it doesn't matter how many miracles and different things we see. God did them, not us. Right. He just used us as conduits. And, and right. we have to be wise enough to take that back seat to God and don't let the people build you up so much that you forget you are just a man, man or a woman. Come you know? on. Yeah, because you, you can falter so many ways in this uh, this thing called uh, church. Um, but the church is 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 not the answer The that because and, and, and I'm going to shut up here in a second. No, this is good. <laughs> but, no, but the, the, uh, uh, this is good the, the thing is, is that um, there are two churches when you you quoted that scripture in Matthew 16, where it talks about the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church and the key phrase words in that phrase is my church. And it tells us and it distinguishes to us that there are other churches out there, but they're not my church. And, he, and he's telling us that his church, the gates of hell won't prevail against. So we live in a, in a culture where there are many churches out there in the world that claim him as their Lord, Savior, and God, but don't function under mm. the obedience and the, and the submission required to really be his church. Because mm. to be 
to be his church, you have to follow his spirit because everything about his church is governed by the Holy Spirit. You know, once the Holy Spirit comes, the New Testament church is formed. Prior to that, Jesus is building that church up. Once the Holy Ghost falls on the day of Pentecost, then the church is formed. The leadership is formed. Jesus is already in, in heaven sitting at the right hand of God and the Holy Ghost has come down to watch over every word Jesus has spoken until it's fulfilled. And this is the, the age that we're living in now is, is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost, the dispensation of the book of Acts, the dispensation of, of the disciples of Christ. But overall, it is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. He is moving by his spirit to accomplish the things that need to be done. And I think, you know, the, the biggest difficulty is, is the world and the church itself does not know the difference between the world, the church in the world and the right. church that is Jesus church. Right. It's, they're different. And, but you can tell the, the church of Jesus because the church in the world is at war with us because right. we, we speak a truth. They won't go <laughs> that far to speak. And we live a truth they won't go that far to live. And so that's why the world, I mean, look at entertainment now. Entertainment yeah. is, is, in, 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 is in the church. I mean, we have right. more, more entertainers Woo! in the church than we have praise and worship right. leaders yes. or choir directors, musicians. Right. And, and the thing is, is you can do both, but you yeah. cannot qualify them the same. You, you know, because like I think right. what I do, I still do as an apostle, my apostolic calling does right. not require that I be church. My apostolic right. calling is called to the church that has no walls. And that That's was it. the same church that Jesus preached to. That's it. You know, he, he went into the synagogue from time to time, but his church was outdoors. That's where, right. Where the real people were. So that's you know, I think right. that's the discrepancy uh, nowadays for most people is that they don't realize which they don't know which church they are a part of uh, until you mature. You're not going to be able to differentiate them because right. they almost look a lot alike. And then we can go back to that scripture where it says having a form of godliness, mm. but denying mm. the power of God. Now, the power of God is essential because it is the power of God that will allow you to find your way to the kingdom of God. And, and the kingdom of God is not in word or deed. It ain't in something you say or you do, but it's in power. You know, so the power of God is the essential piece and the power of God is the Holy Ghost. He's right. the, he's restraining, holding back the, the darkness and the wickedness because we think it's bad. But if the Holy Ghost wasn't here, it would be worse. Right, right. You know? This is powerful. And, and those of you that are listening and watching, it is not too late for you to share this broadcast because somebody needs a word. And what I, what I am so grateful for with you following your gifted area in basketball is I feel like God had you use that gift in a place where people needed to see God. See, yeah. they think it's just the NBA. Right. But there was so much more that God did with you amongst all of those superstars and men and, and, and people in the stands screaming and shouting and yelling. But here you are still a vessel of Christ, an ambassador of the kingdom mm -hmm. that went out to the court and you turned the basketball court into the king's court. And you didn't have to say it a word except for do the craft that God called you to do. And I think that that is why the result of that was success. And so I feel those of you that are listening and watching tonight, if God called you somewhere to do something and you know it's him and it's your gift and you're still questionable about maybe the surrounding, if it's your assignment, God's going to equip you for it. He's mm -hmm. going to place a fiery hedge of protection around you and you shall succeed. You That's shall right. win. Mm -hmm. And I just love your story because there wasn't when I hear your love of Christ, when I hear the authority of the Holy Spirit that speaks through you. It is evident and it is clear that that's, that's what you walk in and that's what has carried you. And people forget that if you just believe and trust that God in you, you'll be able to sustain and fight against those pressures. And again, it may not be easy sometimes. That's it right. may not be easy. Right. Um, we understand that. But again, I go back to being equipped Mm -hmm. How God began to equip you. It was a setup, even from the beginning, growing up in Chicago, yep. you know, and going forth into the NBA. And you, you, you were the, you were the church going through the NBA amongst all those players. Yep. And to me, that is the reason why the success story exists today, and you are a legacy. Amen. God That's is how good. I feel. He's good. 
the the other essential piece is uh something i've taught on um this week uh and it's the providential will of god providence mm. literally is you know that piece that says that God who lives in eternity steps into time to make sure that whatever he's spoken in and over our lives comes to pass. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we start to talk about, oh, it's just providential, or it's the provid it's providence, it's the providential will of God, what we're saying is God won't let me fail. That no matter what it is, as long as my heart contends with God to be in relationship with God, in his providential awareness, God will always make, there are no coincidences. God is making these things happen because they're planned. Everything that's happening in our lives right now and has happened in our life, it's providential. It was God allowing some bad thing to us we thought was bad, but then he turned and told us all things work together for your good. good. So you yeah. can't be setting up your saying this is a bad thing. You don't even know the outcome of it. Right. You, just, you just know that right now you feel some kind of way about it, but in the providence of God. He inserts himself. He inserts angels. He inserts the Holy Spirit. He uses people. We know this because the scripture tells us that a man's gift will make room for, him, for him or before mm. great men and women. So he uses people. He tells us, give and it shall be given unto yes. you, good measure, pressed down, shaping yeah. together, yeah. rolling over yeah. shell, men given to your bosom. He uses human beings to do the things that he inspires them to do. That is his providential will for us. That is him saying that I know I started this thing off the right way and you got off off kill, but I'm going to bring you back because my favor is upon your life. You cannot fail. You may slip and fall, but you won't fail. This is not mm. the end of it. You get back up on your feet and run. Right. Keep running. Just run. Woo! Don't look back. You know, that has been my testimony is to find my way back to Christ at all costs, no matter what I do in my ah. life or whatever happens. Keep running. Even into the chastisement of God, run into it because whom the Lord loves, he chastises. Mm. Be, be faithful to God like he is to you. Just be loyal. Be loyal even when you, you know you're wrong. Be loyal to God and watch his faithfulness. Mm. Be loyal to God and watch his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Family, did you hear hear that? I mean, I, I have chills all in here. The Holy Spirit is just moving and talking and speaking on tonight. If you have not grasped that in the spirit, I need you to go back and listen and watch this broadcast. Apostle, uh, give us some final words um, about, about your life, about what you want the people to know, not only here in the U.S., but across the waters. Um, you have just blessed us so much with your testimony, your transparency. Um, I, I want to know the details about your church so that we can make sure that we share with everybody where to go to visit you at your church. Um, but I just thank God that he has used your story, not just as um, you know, a legend in the NBA and, and having all these awesome accolades. And you all, you can Google him and YouTube and you can find the awesomeness of this six foot nine Am I mm -hmm. correct? King, mm -hmm. a king that's, uh, that is sold out for Christ on the King's Court, has an awesome testimony. And I need everybody to go back and listen again and let God keep speaking to your spirit, edifying your spirit and, and lifting up your spirit. Um, but with that said, um, what can you just share with the people um, as a final um, message or word to us tonight here on the Triumphant Show? Well, let me give you the information to the church. The church is called yes. Hope E. Genito ministries international we're at 5405 memorial drive in stone mountain georgia in 30083 again that's 5405 memorial drive in stone mountain georgia building i uh 30083 and um the thing i would be oh you can also if you need prayer 404-781-5281 is our prayer line is also the line to the church 404 uh, in, in the, uh, the ministry, Hope Egenito Ministries International, the Egenito is a Greek word that means to become something that mm. I never was before. Uh, and yeah. it talks about it from the basis of the gospel of St. John, the first chapter where Christ came down in the form of flesh and became something that he never was before. It is an initiative for us as well to work every day to become the better part of who he says we are, to become 
that something that we never were before by in injecting more of him through the word, through the prayer time, through the time we pray and talk to God and God talks back to us, you know, and then the fellowship with other saints, you know, and other believers. Mm, and good. then also to remember that in that fellowship is to bring others in. Our job is to preach the gospel to the world. That is the commission, the great commission, not just for the disciples in right. the original church, but for all the disciples. Oh. Our job is to, is to not stop preaching. And mm. And the only way you can do that is you have to fulfill the, the promises and the plans of God. And that plan is to always mature and to become something that you've never been before and let God do that. Don't do that with your intellect. Don't do that with your labor. Do that with the faithfulness you have and the loyalty you have to God to do it his way. If you do it his way, he will bless you because he blesses faithfulness. My God, my God. So family, if you have just joined us or if you have heard tonight's um, powerful show with Apostle Dr. Terry Cummings, um, I know you were blessed and I'm asking that you go back um, and re-listen to this broadcast and share this on your timeline. And definitely please, if you are in the state of Georgia to go and visit, I will post mm -hmm. again the address and the prayer line on um, the on my timeline and on all social media um areas again that's 5405 memorial drive in stone mountain georgia building i as an ice um zip is 30083 the phone number for the prayer line if you need prayer tonight tomorrow if you need prayer leave a message call that line do mm -hmm. not let the word that you heard tonight and you felt something that God's speaking to you or even about somebody else. Do not let it go in vain. Do not let that seed get planted somewhere else it shouldn't be planted. Tonight, you say, you know what? I need just the Lord to speak to you. I just need to tell somebody just to pray for me. And guess what? Sometimes you don't have to tell people what you specifically need. Just say, I need prayer. And Amen. the Holy Spirit will reveal to that person, whatever they need to know to pray strategically for your need. And that prayer line number is 404-781-5281. And I will repost this on all of my social media platforms tonight so that you don't forget and that you can take advantage and that also so you can connect with Apostle Dr. Terry Cummings. Um, Apostle, thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. on the Triumphant Show. Um, you were an absolute blessing. Um, there's really me. not a lot more that I need to say or do because we need to marinate on the word that you have just released to us. And so I pray that God just blesses you back a hundredfold, not only for you sacrificing your time to come on this broadcast, um, but also for you sharing the word that God gave you with such humility, such, such, such substance, and just with a fresh anointing. So God bless you and thank God you again. You All right. All right, family, thank you for joining the Triumphant Show on tonight with Charita Lovelace. We are going to end tonight's broadcast. Don't forget to go back, like, and share, and replay the broadcast. I'll also post it on social media platforms uh, based off of where it's going to be played um, in the UK, Nigeria, and throughout global platforms through the Vision TV. Um, and if you want to be a guest, just send me an email at sharitalovelace at gmail.com and let us know what your triumphant story is as well. Listen, God bless you. Uh, may the Lord be with all of you tonight. And just remember that there is nothing that you can do to separate yourself from the love of Jesus Christ. Listen, I love you and God loves you too. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. We will see you next week, same time and same place. God bless you and good night.